Disclaimer. The following footage was taken way back in February this year, before the most serious wave of COVID-19 hit Thailand. Everything you see here is the condition at that time when most businesses, including arcade game centers, were still allowed to open. The reason why this was never uploaded until now is because it took quite long for editing. Anyway, better late than never, I hope you enjoy my first vlog. Yo, what's up everyone? I'm the owner of this channel, and in this channel, I would like to refer to myself as Keshiki. Yes, I'm the 5th ranker of the 9th KC in Game Dance Rush. So if you've been like following my channel, so far I've been uploading a lot of Dance Rush videos. Not much interaction, just me dancing alone always with some peers. But today, we're going to be a little bit different, okay? This will be like the first vlog-like video. It could be the last, you know, I'm not really experienced in this. I'm not even sure if this mic is working actually, but I don't want to do it the other day anymore. Well, the reason I chose this day is because this is the first day that Nostalgia, the newest music game of Konami, finally arrived into Thailand. So before we get inside, let's talk a little bit about history about this game. As you may have known, Bimani, which is a subdivision of Konami, is the pioneer of rhythm games. Some of their games are like a simulation of playing an actual instrument or performing something with music. For example, their first game, Beat Mania is based on DJ Turntable, Dance Dance Revolution is based on dancing, and obviously, Guitar Freaks and Drum Mania are based on the guitar and drum. Eventually, it might come as no surprise if one day they release their first music game based on an actual keyboard, which is... Nostalgia! Nope! The first game to mimic playing this kind of instrument was Keyboard Mania, released in 2000. However, it seems at that time Konami really went way too far with the realism aspect. You see, with rhythm games, the controller and the notes are supposed to be simplified versions of actual instruments. For instance, instead of a real guitar, Guitar Freak's controller is a small guitar with only four buttons. And when you, quote, dance on DDR, you're basically stepping on just four arrows. The point is, you don't have to be professional musicians or dancers to enjoy and get good at these games. But for Keyboard Mania, they decided to implement actual two octave Yamaha keyboard as a controller. So imagine a music game where you don't have just four buttons or four arrows because this time you've got 24 freaking buttons. And can you imagine keeping up with notes falling from 24 lanes on the game screen? Obviously, compared this to their other games, this is ridiculously overwhelming for most arcade game players. It was too much of a learning curve. And thus, the game had a short lifespan of only a year. After more than a decade since then, Perhaps Bimani has learned their lesson. As a company that never stops experimenting with new ideas for rhythm game, in 2016, they decided to come back to this piano simulation concept once more. This time, however, unlike Keyboard Mania, this next game is really meant to be a piano game for those who do not play piano. So think of playing something that looks similar to a piano, but you don't really have to remember which key is Do Re Mi whatsoever. Kind of like Demo or Tunithum if you play any rhythm game at all. This game is exactly a Bimani version of that. And its name is, that's right, Nostalgia. Officially launched in March 2017. Hey, wait. Isn't it 2021 already? Yeah. To tell you the truth, it's not a new game at all. Being released in 2017 means Dance Rush is newer. But it was not until this year in 2021 has it finally been imported to here in Thailand. And that's why this is my time now and I won't let you stop me. Sorry for the overreact. What I mean is I'm going to give it a try. And now that you know it, the place that it arrived here in BK Center happens to be the best location for game centers in Thailand. Wow. It has the highest number of cabinets and the easiest place to access for most players. So, without further ado, let's get inside. Okay, now I'm on, I'm on the 7th floor and I'm in front of the Arcade Game Center. There's actually another one near the movie theater. 
but the one that has lost its tail is this one. You can see that there's animate near it. It's called X10 Karaoke and Games because it also has karaoke as well. Talking about the COVID-19 situation here, we don't have lockdown as of now. So luckily, arcade game centers are allowed to open. But, you know, with some strict measures, of course, actually, I should be wearing a mask inside here. So let's go check it out. Okay, so not, not that many people are waiting. I think you know, just a few more cues and then I can get my first try on this game. Okay, so basically this guy who's playing before my turn is like the prodigy of our Thai music game community. Remember, this is just day one that this game landed in Thailand and guess what? He's already playing at level 12, which is like almost the highest level of this game. And look at how many combos he's rocking right here. So please don't expect me to play at this insane skill level. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm more of a dance guy. Oh, by the way, yes, it's okay to take videos of other players, but always under the condition that you ask for their permission first. He's aware that I'm taking videos of him. I've already asked him before he played this final song. In the end, he did say something like it was harder than expected, but yeah, he still got A+, so I don't know. That's already good enough for me. If you disagree, just wait and see how I'll screw up this thing, because now it's my turn. As with other Bimani games, lock in with the amusement pass to save your data. Now let's skip this part. Because I'm not comfortable showing my passcode. Can I read Japanese? Yes. Am I going to waste time reading this? Of course not. That is way too long. There are many players waiting in the queue. So input your in-game name. And I'm going to use the name that I've been using with every music game that I've played. Keshki. Don't ask me why I changed I into exclamation mark. Even if it's kind of edgy. Because that's what I like, okay? Apparently, there's only one game mode and it takes 3 credits. So 1 credit is 10 baht, so it means uh, 30 baht for one game in here. Is that expensive, cheap compared to your country? Please tell me in the comments. Wow, and look at this. Just by locking in for the first time, they just give me so many songs on the first day. I'm not sure if this is usual for new players or if it's a time-limited event in-game. Anyway, I'll take it. Who doesn't like free songs? Besides, these artworks are so freaking cute. Now I'm at music select screen where you can choose song based on genre. But here's the awesome part. See the top right? That's the search function. This allows you to combine different inputs into your search. So for instance, what I'm doing here is I want songs that also appear on Dance Rush Stardom. And because I'm still a new, they also have to be from level 1 to 5 in this game. And here's the result. Now I have all the songs that I'm familiar with. Yay! Let's see how many do they have. Wait, what? Nani? Only 12 matches? Yeah, I guess it's not that unusual. When you actually think about it. The gameplays are too distinct between these two games. Anyway, let me place my camera here. So I can play properly with both my hands. And my first pick is going to be the song imported from Dance Rush, Black Jackal. Great! This game has no easy chart. There's only normal, hard, and expert. So let me choose the easiest option available, normal, which is going to be level 5. I know this song damn well in Dance Rush, but let's see how well it translates into a piano rhythm game. Alright, let's go, come on! Starts with a whole note, easy. Wait, what? Why am I missing? Oh, I see. I screwed up right off the bat, didn't I? Let's rewind a little bit so I can explain myself. Here's the thing. Nostalgia has a touch screen. How do you input your name? You use a touch screen. How do you search for songs? You use a touch screen. How do you confirm the song you've picked? Of course, the touch screen. Up to this point, I've become so used to the touch screen. To the point that I forgot that when you play the damn thing, you have to play with a keyboard down there. Yeah, I did bounce back pretty quickly once I know I screwed up, but that was embarrassing as hell. Anyway, first five notes, Mitz. Let's move on. 
Even after realizing the correct place to put my fingers, there's another problem. Why are these notes so slow? You see, when the notes are too slow, it's hard to tell visually when is the right timing to hit these notes. Therefore, what I'm trying to do here is to increase the speed so that the notes approach this judgment line faster and it's easier to tell when is the right timing and it will also create more space between each note. For those who are not familiar with the concept of rhythm game, increasing the speed does not make the song go faster, alright? You still play the same song and each note still corresponds to the same beat. What it does is it simply makes these notes or rectangular bars scroll down across the screen to the judgment line faster. So it's just a visual difference. So if you don't believe me, the best way to understand this is to pick any rhythm game that you can change the speed level and try to play the same song using different speed. You see that? Once I get the right speed, the speed that I'm comfortable with, and I start to understand the rhythm of the song, now I'm making combos smoothly. Also, thanks to the fact that I play this song on Dance Rush, I kinda know the rhythm ahead. And that's it. It's fantastic! Really? Hmm... I guess this is one of friendlier Bimani games. Cause I don't think like I would get A+. Ooh, rank up for no reason. Never mind, I am fantastic. Now we're back to music select screen. So what should I go with the next song? Nani? Oh, window just pop up. It kind of says something like if you get the required number of bingos, you'll get that song. It can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal. But I'm not really sure how do I get like how do I get a stamp in each number. So it will not let me skip this part unless I pick a song. They all seem pretty nice. Unfortunately, I have very little knowledge regarding these artists. So whichever song has the coolest cover art, I'll choose that one. Oh snap, never mind, I ran out of time. Was that even the coolest? Since there's only 12 matches when I choose Dance Rush Stardom, so let me unselect that. Great, now there's way too much, so let's be more specific. Well, if you notice carefully, there's a dead game keyboard mania right there. So instead of choosing songs that also appear in other Bimani games, this time let's choose a song that originate from the first installment of this game itself. So choose this nostalgia icon here and here we go. Now, because I know almost none of these songs, what I'm doing here is clicking at each song to listen to its preview and find out which one interests me the most. And it turns out, this takes time and time is running out, so I end up with this one. Now pay attention to this checkbox. You know actually I had wanted this in the first song but I didn't know how to access this. What I'm talking about is the gameplay option. It's kinda lame that Konami doesn't bother make it more obvious because these visual settings do make a difference. The only way to access this is to check that checkbox after you've chosen a song. And it's all written in Japanese. Anyway, the gameplay options are divided into four main categories. I wish I could show you the full screens without my hands blocking. What's cool is, it plays this demo song that will let you observe what each option does. The first part, main options include setting the volume of your headphones. Yes, you can use headphones with this game. Next, perhaps the most important, is speed which I already talked a lot during first song, although you can adjust this while you're actually playing. Obviously, it is far more efficient to do this beforehand. 
Speaking of hand, that's the next option. This allows you to play this game with only either hand. Why would I do that? So I'm not gonna choose any of that because I still want to play with both my hands. The fourth and fifth options of this category are kind of too technical, so I'm not gonna explain them here. The next category is visual. The first in line here is trajectory, which changes how the notes scroll down from above. Do you want these notes to curve around or look flat like DDR? All up to you. Fast and slow are indicators telling you when you're pressing too fast or slow. Let's leave that on. And height allows you to adjust the height of those indicators. I wish I could tell you more, but you only have a minute to make these adjustments. And oops, time's up. This second song has a long ass name called Natsuhiro Diary. Yunaki Nostalgia. Here we go. I had no idea what to do with that note on the right. It kinda sucks that this game has no tutorial. You know with easier single notes, yeah you know what to do, you just need to single press. With longer notes, you long press. But that note earlier, I wasn't really sure. One thing I didn't have time to mention is, this one is a hard level 7. So it's definitely harder than the previous song. I'm already dropping some combos here and then. I began to notice that the thing that always got me is when notes on the left and right hand are really close but are not exact same time, you know? Like pressing 3 or 4 notes at the same time using both hands is easy. But when you have to press a note with one hand and press another note on another hand and it's only about like a split second apart, that's a real combo ender. Not saying that it's impossible with sufficient amount of practice as with any other rhythm games. Speaking of the keyboard, it doesn't feel like an actual keyboard at all. You see that when I press a certain area with just one or two fingers, three to four keys around the same area just light up. It's like each key is somehow connected to the ones around them. Maybe they're actually just one white touchpad, I don't know. However, the most important aspect is, each key or area is not fixed to a particular sound. You may have already guessed that you don't have to remember what each key sounds like in an actual keyboard. No prior piano knowledge required to play this game at all. Hooray, and that's it. And that was pretty fun, actually. Okay, it's just said, it's fantastic, again. So I guess that's just a usual message when you clear a song for this game. In other words, nothing special. Upon clearing second stage, my bingo chart got filled up. Now I get it. Each number has a specific condition that you can click on to check. For instance, it can be clearing a song on hard difficulty, playing a song of a specific genre, or getting a full combo. It's a very be money thing, actually. Never mind. Now it's time for the final song. Since I just cleared a song on a hard difficulty, level 7, so I think I should be fine if I select something around this or a little bit harder. Now, I want my final song to be a be money song, meaning songs made by their own artists, not some licensed songs from anime, or some already famous J-pop artists. Not that I have anything against them though. If you are a rhythm game player, you probably know that those songs tend to be beginner friendly. In other words, too easy. Well, that's one reason. Another big reason is, well, I don't want to state it here. If you're a YouTuber, you'll know. Still, worry not. Their in-house songs already cover a wide variety of genres. My second pick was a piano only without any other instrument. If you don't like that, if you want something that has piano with other instruments, something more melodic or catchy, trust me, they have that as well. I'm sorry though, because in the end I decided to go a little bit safe with a song that I know again, Black Jackal. But this time, it's going to be harder, because now it's a hard difficulty at level 7. Before playing, I do want to enter the option mode one more time just to make sure of everything and check some categories that I missed earlier.
Now I just discovered that in this note category, you can adjust the vertical width and the width of each note here. But I think I prefer the way it is. Remember the game gives you 60 seconds for these options, but if you feel like you're good to go, you can press OK here to enter the song right away. Alright, here we go. Let's see how hard it's going to be. Remember, this is my first day, so if I pass, it's already good enough. There's one final mechanic I would like to talk about. As I've said earlier, each key or button on this keyboard doesn't really correspond to a particular key sound. However, these notes you're playing do correspond to a certain beat or sound in the music. If you miss one note, a sound kind of goes missing. If you press too fast, a certain beat of the song also comes out too fast as well. Now, previously I took the liberty of inserting background music, so my previous gameplay sounded as if nothing goes wrong. But from this point on, I would like you to hear what happens to the song while you're playing if you mess up. Enjoy my mistake! Let's face it, this song is quite unsettling, isn't it? It's one of those songs that are exciting and fun when you play them in rhythm games, but not the ones you would normally put on your playlist in your daily life, right? I would say they did a good job remixing this into nostalgia, but I still prefer the original version in Dance Rush. Unsurprisingly, this song has the lowest score of all three I played today, but not gonna lie, that was pretty fun. I do want to continue right away, but you only got three songs for one game, so now, I have to leave for the next player in the queue. And that should conclude the gameplay part of this vlog. After this, I also played for another round, but didn't take any footage. Instead, I have this interview with one of the best guitar freaks and drum mania players in Thailand. He's also very well experienced in many B-Money games. Let's hear his thoughts about this one. ครับตัวนี้ครับแนะนําตัวหน่อยครับชื่ออะไรครับชื่อในเกมก็ได้ครับอ่าชื่อดานิมาในเกมครับโปเตเล่นเกมอะไรครับปกติตีกองครับเล
Ooh, it's not that hard. Anyone can understand what to do. Because I kind of messed up at the beginning, touching the screen. You're supposed to touch the keyboard, right? The songs are pretty amazing. I believe there are a lot of better songs hidden in there. The songs that I chose today may not represent the best that the game has to offer. Of course, it's nothing like playing the actual piano. You cannot become a pianist by playing this game. But I think that's the beauty part of it. Like, you don't have to be actual guitarist to play uh, guitar dora. You don't have to be an actual dancer to play dance rush. That means anyone can play it. And of course, if you practice, you'll get better. Okay, but lastly, will this become like one of my main games? Definitely not. Not saying the game is bad, but as my channel name suggests, that's not a dance game, so why am I doing this? this like I said, I want to try something new, like the long format. And this will be a good experiment for myself as well. But there's not going to be much of non-dance arcade games in this channel, I promise you. So what do you guys think? Should I make more video in this format? You want to see more vlogs like this? Or should I just stick to Dance Rush gameplays? Tell me in the comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And I'm going back to my main game for now. So see ya! Oh.